Do you have any questions before we move on? All right, so here's... <laughs> Did I wear my mask? No, I have not been wearing a mask. Um... Okay. Um... All right, so here's how we define an electric current. So here's a wire. Okay. Uh, now this is the general definition. So here's a wire, and uh, so if these were electrons, the current would be in that direction, and the electrons are moving in this direction. So what this show tells you is the electric current denoted by I is the rate at which charges are flowing. So you're standing there and find figuring out how many charge flow past you per second. Okay, that's what this current is. Okay. So for instance, so, so if a steady current is flowing in that direction, uh, a steady current is flowing, uh, then uh, Q as a function of time would be a, a linear function of time and dQ by dt, oh, well, no, let me, would be I, I t and dQ by dt would be I, okay? so that that's what that is okay and um, current is the rate of flow of charge how much charge flowed in that much time so the units for current are coulomb divided by second so one coulomb per second is a one ampere current and uh, you guys remember a coulomb is a large charge a large thunder cloud will have about 100 coulombs of charge so um So uh, the unit of uh, uh, current is an ampere. Hey guys, one question. Uh, why does uh, it kick this program kick people out? It seems like uh, some people have already come in and then they get kicked out and they're ba coming back in. What is happening? You guys, if any of you know the answer, just type in your answer. Okay. All right, so let's get back to the slides. Okay, <clears throat> all right, so somebody's PC crashed. Okay, Western's PC crashed. All right, uh, so here are some typical currents. Uh, again, let's go back to the current. Uh, current is the rate at which uh, charge flows and one ampere is one, one, one coulomb flows per, one, per second. Okay, so here are some uh, typical currents. Um, okay, and zoom is never stable, okay. All right, so here are some typical currents. Um, here are some interesting currents. So here's a scanning tunneling microscope. And uh, these are atoms in a, arranged in a circle. And I'll um, show you how that thing works in a second. And the current there is 10 to the minus 11 amperes. Okay. When a neuron fires, uh, it's a, a nano ampere current that flows in, in down the axon. Okay. And um, we'll talk about that in one of the later chapters as well. Uh, in a wristwatch, you have a current of a microamp flowing in your uh, in your MP3 player, it's 10 minus a milliampere flowing um, in an LED bulb. So here's an interesting <clears throat> fact uh, that, uh, so in your 100 watt incandescent bulb, there's a current of one amp flowing. In an LED bulb, it's uh, almost 0 0.05 amps flowing. So you can see that right here, you can see uh, pretty much the energy consumption of an LED bulb is about 5% that of this incand incandescent bulb. And, um, you know, so it practically, practically uses no current at all. Yeah. Uh, in a lightning, you have a, a, a current of 10,000 amps. The aurora is about a million amp and so on. 
the national ignition facility, which is a fusion, which you want to produce energy via fusion reaction, that's uh, 10 million amps. And the helospheric current sheet, uh, uh, I'd urge you guys to look this up. This is uh, actually the largest structure in the solar system. Anyway, it's a sheet of current, and there the current is a uh, uh, billion amps. Okay. Anyway, so here are some of the currents, some of the range of currents that we deal with. Uh, so these are some of the currents that we deal with all the time. So this is at the microscopic scale. Um, all right. All right, so the current direction. Uh, so by convention, we assign the current the same direction as the flow of positive charges. Okay, so in a metal wire, it's the carriers are plain electrons, so electrons move in that direction, and uh, the current is moving. The, by convention, the current is taken to be that direction. Now, in semiconductors, you might have something called holes. And if you have holes that are moving in that direction, that's the direction of the current. In an electrolyte, you would have both positive and negative charges moving. And when the negative charges move in that direction, the positive charges are moving in that direction. And again, all these move, all these charges move because in response to an electric field. So this was the electric field established in this in these materials, whatever they are. Okay, so in an electrolyte, you'll have both uh, positive and negative charges. Uh, so also in a gas, okay. In conductors, mo motion of electrons give uh, rise to currents. In electrolytes and gases, current is the result of both positive and negative charges, okay. So, so imagine this is the, and this is the wire, and these are electrons moving. This is a metal wire. And remember, this is the drift velocity of the electrons, which is the average speed at which they're moving in response to an electric field that was established within the wire. And the way you establish an electric field in the wire is um, by connecting it to a battery, to a voltage source. Okay, so what this expression says is, and I'm just going to go through this expression. This expression says N is the number density of electrons. How many electrons there are per unit volume? And remember in a typical metal, N is of the order of 10 to the 27 per meter cube. So that's a large number. So the current in this wire, okay, current in this wire, the number density of electrons, charge of the electrons, Q is the charge of the electrons. V is, D is the drift velocity of the electrons, the average speed at which they're moving. And that's about half a millimeter a second and times the area of cross section of the wire. <laughs> okay. So now let's uh, mention one thing. So, so, Here's a battery, here's a wire, and a current is flowing through that thing. Here, these are the electrical symbols for it. Now, if you double, so here's, uh, we'll say this is two volts and this is four volts. If you double the voltage of the uh, battery, the current doubles, so everything else being the same, the current doubles. And when the current doubled, what has happened is, uh, so when the current doubled, see the area of cross section of the wire did not change. The charge of the electrons did not change. The density of, it's the same wire, the density of electrons did not change. So when the current doubles, what happens is this speed doubles, the drift velocity doubles. So when you double the voltage, you have doubled, you have doubled the strength of the electric field. E, 2E, and the current doubles. Okay, so that's what's happening at the microscopic level. Okay, um, 
Do you guys have any questions at this point? Okay. If you guys have any questions, just uh, type them in the chat window and uh, I will try and address them as we go. Okay. All right. So <clears throat> now you saw that um, current was how much charge passes per second at a given point. It turns out that it's, uh, uh, we would, we want to define a quantity called current density denoted by J. Current density is current per unit area. So if I is a current flowing this wire, divide that by the area of cross section of the wire. That gives you the how much current is flowing per unit area. Uh, that is, uh, that's useful. It turns out this is the current density is what is proportional to the electric field. And so that's why we define current density, okay? So uh, electric current density is that, okay? And so as I was saying, the current density is what's proportional to the electric field. This proportionality constant is called the conductivity of the material. It depends on the material of the wire. This is known as the conductivity of the material. So this guy is known as the conductivity. And uh, it's named so that the higher the conductivity, higher the current density. And this fella is called the resistivity. And then that makes sense. The higher the resistance, lower the current. Okay, so for a given electric field. Anyway, these are properties of the material, and you can see that conductivity is inversely related to the resistivity. They're related to each other. So higher the conductivity, lower the resistivity. Okay. <clears throat> Okay, so, so in the previous slide, you saw that J, the current density is proportional to the electric field. Now in practice, in practice, it's hard to measure current density or the electric field. What you can measure is, what you can measure using macroscopic instrument is current and voltage. And current density, they're related to that, and voltage is related to the electric field. So we will express everything in terms of these, which are easier to measure, and that's what Ohm's law does. Okay, so the voltage across, a, across this wire is the electric field inside times the length of the wire. Okay, so the voltage across this wire is, electric field inside the wire times the length of the wire and the electric field is constant inside the wire times that, assuming the resistance is constant. Okay, and the electric field, remember, electric field is current density divided by rho, current density divided by rho. And uh, uh, so, so L sigma, um, L, um, no, what what happened? Where did I get the I? And oh, J is I over A. Okay, so J was I over A. That's what you got replaced by. And so this quantity is called the resistance of the wire. Okay, so the voltage across the wire is the resistance of the wire, the resistance of the wire times I, the current flowing through the wire. Okay, so here's this relationship is much more useful than this relationship. Okay, this relationship and this relationship, it's hard to measure that and it's hard to measure that. And so we have expressed, essentially expressed this in terms of more easily measurable quantities, which are the voltage and the current in the wire. Okay, and this is known as Ohm's law. Okay, so you increase the voltage across a wire and the current increases. Okay, higher the resistance of the wire, lower the current. And again, again, this is Ohm's law. So this is the more practical law. This, this law and this law 
are stating the same thing, except that this is in more Mac. This is stated in terms of more practical quantities. Okay. All right. So now is a good time to pause and.